Back in 1999, Resident Evil 3 was one of the most talked about games due to the fact that its main monster, the Nemesis, was able to chase you around the entire game. This horrifying fact was something new at the time and left a lot of players terrified of even turning the game on and seeing the Nemesis running at you with a rocket launcher in hand. Well, 20 years have passed since then and the Resident Evil 3 remake is here. But what can we learn from its design? This is not just a review of Resident Evil 3 as a game, this is a review of Resident Evil 3 from a game designer's perspective. For the best game design tips and advice, please subscribe to my channel. Also, please hit the bell button so you're notified whenever I post a new video. Resident Evil 3 starts by strongly setting the environment and telling the player that it is a cruel world and that your life is at stake. The game does this by having the nemesis pursuing you only a couple of minutes after you boot the game. You see chaos everywhere, people screaming, things falling apart, and eventually the dreaded zombies. These elements together allow for the player to feel hopeless and it is a great way to set up the story. As a player, you learn very quickly that you're not going to be safe anywhere, and although the ammo is plenty in this game, there are a lot of surprises that could be waiting for you in the next corner. The main threat in this game is obviously the nemesis, and he is relentless. No matter what you do, he will try to end you at any cost. There is no way to defeat him, you can only delay him. This serves as another reminder that you're never safe in this world, and adds to the tension and fear of him. As a player, you just want to run from him. However, after the first portion of the game, the nemesis is relegated to scripted fights. And although the fights themselves are great, him not chasing you anymore makes the game a lot less stressful and scary than the original version. More importantly, it takes out a game system that could impact the game in meaningful ways. What would happen if the nemesis was able to follow you everywhere but in save rooms? Players will start to value save rooms more and would probably be more careful about planning a strategy or maybe the way they navigate the environment will be different. There is a chance they won't explore as much because of fear. See how a little adjustment in gameplay can cause a totally different player behavior? But back to Nemesis being left out. I think this is a shame, because the monster that inspired the game's name is nowhere to be found. In my opinion, it hurts the experience, because it breaks the immersion for the player. I understand that they probably did this in order to not have to deal with pacing issues, like having the monster pursuing you all the time and have the player with high pressure at all times. But it would have been good if they added some sequences of him pursuing you in between, so it adds to that feeling of not being safe while still keeping the player experience balanced. The game takes place in Raccoon City. Unfortunately, most of the game takes place inside buildings, so you only get to see the city for the first few hours. Well, by city I mean a couple of alleys and key places, like a pharmacy or a diner. But you get the point. I think this is a shame because it's the best part of the game. Raccoon City can be considered a character in itself. The city is very distinct, with cool landmarks, places to explore, and puzzles to solve. This type of layout encourages exploration, because the player is going to want to see what's in that all the way over there. That not only makes backtracking bearable, but it also allows for the player to take different routes whenever he needs to. The player is also rewarded by going off the main paths. For example, maybe they find a document to read more about the story, or some ammunition for their gun. However, keep in mind that this is still a survival horror game, and as such, Capcom has done a great job of making the environments feel like that. You will think, how can a city feel claustrophobic? Well, the answer is with narrow alleys and streets packed with a lot of oddly parked cars and random objects out of place. This is great because it makes the player stay on their toes and never feel safe, even when no monster is lurking around. This, in addition to the lighting effects and overall gloomy color palette, makes for the player to feel uneasy and hopeless even with no zombies on screen. One great thing that Capcom did in this game was environmental storytelling. Whenever you enter a room as a player, you instantly know what happened there. You might not know who caused it, but you know it was something tragic. And as a bonus, it sets up the stage for something big to come. For example, in this room, you see a lot of blood everywhere, and you as a player are kept wondering what did this. So what happens next? Just when you are about to exit, 
a new monster that you have not seen before greets you and that is one way for the game to tell you that now you're going to be facing those monsters from now on. One aspect that they didn't do as great in environmental storytelling is the placement of the red barrels. Who on earth will have these randomly placed around a city? Obviously it is for gameplay purposes, but still breaks the immersion of the player. One better way to have done this is the way they had the electrical boxes that you can use to electrocute zombies. Those at least make a little more sense if you're in a city. One area in which they did make some significant improvements was the overall user experience. Now, if you already picked up an item of the same category, the next time you pick more, you're not going to see a pop-up with the info of the item you picked up. It will automatically be done for you. This allows for a better and smoother experience for the player, especially if the player is in a room full of enemies. Another thing they did really well was differentiating the objects, or things that are interactive versus the ones that are not. If you pay close attention, they delineate spots that you can climb over or fall through, and they also put emphasis on things that you can interact with, like big red buttons or huge consoles. One thing that is new to this installment of the series is the dodge mechanic. I'll be honest, at first it seems not to be very useful and difficult to master, but as you get more used to it, you start using it more and more. It even rewards you as a player for doing it perfectly. Notice how the screen blinks every time you do it perfectly? It also gives you a small window in which you can have a perfect shot at an enemy and that feels rewarding and powerful for the player. One important thing for a game is to not be too repetitive over time, because people can get bored, and Resident Evil 3 does this by providing various enemy designs. This allows for the player to not expect the same enemies over and over again, and it allows to keep the player engaged and immersed within the game. The enemies are also not overused and feel distinct enough from each other, which is important in order for the game not to feel too easy. The more the player sees and defeats an enemy, the less difficult it's going to be. Resident Evil has never been recognized for its storytelling, and this case isn't any different. As a player, I didn't feel invested in the story, and I didn't care about any characters. I think they could have done a better job explaining character motivations and letting us spend more time with certain characters to understand their role in the story more. There are important characters who are only in a couple of scenes, and this makes it hard to care for them at all. This game is connected to Resident Evil 2, which came out last year and takes place chronologically before and after it. Knowing this, it was a shame to not see more of a connection between the two. As a player, I always want to explore environments that I have been a part of in previous games just to see how it changed and what new things I can learn. There is even an element of nostalgia that connects you to the franchise and will be important to build on, so the player can make a stronger connection with the story and get more invested. However, in this case, the cameo of these environments is really short and doesn't add much to it, except for a new cutscene that explains what happens to a couple of characters that aren't that important. A little disappointing, since I would have liked to see them capitalize more on that Resident Evil 2 background to make it interesting and even invite those who never played it to do so. One aspect that a lot of people are mentioning is that the game is short. Personally, I don't see this as a bad thing. A game can be very short, yet still impactful and good. In fact, in this case, I think it is a good thing, because it allows the player to replay the game multiple times on higher difficulties. Not a lot of people have the time or patience to replay a long game. And speaking about replayability and harder difficulties, I think that the best mode of the game is by far one of its hardest difficulties, Nightmare. In this difficulty setting, all items are randomized, and the monster encounters are different and more aggressive. Take this section for example. On the left, you see normal difficulty, and on the right, you see Nightmare difficulty. It is the same section but see how enemy placement can change the game entirely? If you are playing the one on the left, you might feel safe after you take down that first zombie. However, if you play the one on the right and you see that horde coming at you, then it creates tension as a player. That is why environment layout and enemy placement go hand in hand. In order for a level or environment to work, you need to ask yourself what are you going to do in that environment. After you beat the game once, you unlock a shop in which you can trade currency earned in the game and get some cool items for your next playthrough. Some of these 
items vary from new outfit options to infinite ammo weapons. That's a great way to add replayability to the game, because it keeps the player engaged to keep accomplishing those objectives. It might not work for everyone, but a lot of players will still want to accomplish everything. Resident Evil 3 is not a perfect game, but it does a lot of things that we can learn from as designers, from the environment design and ambience to the incredible simplistic UI design, there are very good elements to take away from this new installment of the game. Some things we can take as lessons are to use common and overused environments, not doing enough with the characters and taking out the scariest monster of the game early. Hopefully in the future we see Capcom polish some of these issues and continue delivering cool experiences with that classic Resident Evil tone that is one of the best in the industry at creating survival horror experiences.